Hello, everybody. Welcome to part seven, I believe, of the Hathor material. Yes, I think it's part seven. Today, we're going to be looking at chapters 12 and chapters 13 in the book, the Hathor material. This is exciting. I'm excited about this one. As you guys know, I never look ahead. And this is titled The Rods of Power. We've, we've heard about those, haven't we? All right, let's go. The term rods of power refers to four distinct applications, the first of which was used of actual physical metal rods by the ancient Egyptians in their temples and mystery schools. We know, we know the powers that be on the good side and the bad side are both using these rods, okay? And as I say many times before, or have said before, darkness cannot create anything, only the light can. So everything the darkness uses was created by the light for the light, but inverted and mimicked, but mimicked, mimicked, that's a new word, mimicked by the dark. And so they're using all of this ancient technology from Egypt, from the Atlantean times. Hence why the discovery of Tartaria is probably the nail that's going to be in the cop, going to hammer the coffin closed for this group of controllers. In some of their hieroglyphic paintings, you can see various types of rods. Sometimes there is an onk placed at the top of the rod, and some of these rods were used to specifically activate chakras, energy points or vortex within the body of the initiate. We've talked a lot about chakras on this channel, too. The rods be placed along an initiate's back and then struck, causing the rod to sound much like a tuning fork, thus creating resonant pa patterns of sound that would go into the spine and activate the chakras. These rods were different lengths and when used in a specific manner and a sp specific sequence, they caused the life force, shakem or prana, chi, to rise up the spine through the jed, or the pathway of the chakras, or we call it in yoga, we call that pathway, that jed, the shashumna, shashumna nadi. In this manner, the rods of power were used to assist in it, the initiate to enter other realms of consciousness by way of the chakras and then to explore those worlds. The second meaning of the term rods of power has to do with the actual energy flow that exists within the human body. The central understanding of this has to do with the pranic tube or the central column, which is the tube-like structure that we described earlier. Again, in yoga, we call that pranic tube in the center of the body, shashumna. This pranic tube is a powerful focal point of self-evolution, and there are specific energy flows that run from each of the chakras to the other chakras along this tube. For instance, you could have an energy movement or relationship between the sexual center and the heart or the power center. If the energy flow or rod that connects the second chakra sexual center to the power center is activated, then sex will be expressed as a means to achieve power. However, if you were to express sexuality through your heart, which is a higher frequency range, then the rod between the sexual center and the heart would be activated. So did you guys see that that is basically what they're telling you is that sex magic, we see it both with the good and with the bad. And they, they just told you the difference between the two, didn't they? Let's read the, I want to read this again, because this is fascinating. Obviously, we know one of the difference between the good and the bad is consent. But beyond that, just energetically speaking, let me read that again, because that was very interesting. For instance, you could have an energy movement or relationship between the sexual center and the heart or to the power center. If the energy flow or rod that connects the second chakra, the sexual center, to the power center is activated, then sex will be expressed as a mean to achieve power. However, however, if you were to express sexuality through your heart, which is a higher frequency range, then the rod between the sexual center and the heart would be active. And before we go any further, I'm just going to once again call on Michael and Gabriel and all of my guides and protectors who are here for my highest good. I'm going to ask that you come in and that you protect this recording and that you protect the vocals and that you protect the camera. And if there are any entities hanging around, 
human or otherwise, who are not here for our highest good, who are here to infiltrate this message, I ask that my guides and Michael and Gabriel escort them away. I do not consent to any infiltration on this recording. In this way, the rods of power also refer to the energetic relationship between different frequency ranges of one's own experience via the chakras. If your goal is to experience higher realms of consciousness, then you will activate those rods of power that connect you to the higher chakras. This will allow you to rise yourself, raise yourself up in consciousness through intentionality. If, for instance, you have a sexual relationship, you can use sex as an avenue for touching into the higher frequency domains of your own consciousness. And we went through this in, in the first book we read of Tom Kenyon's where he channeled Magdalene in the Magdalene manuscript. She spoke all about this. And in order to really do this, Magdalene spoke about how, and I know this is a big one for me, you, especially the woman, has to be completely comfortable with the man in order to, to totally achieve this. If there's any sort of hesitation or discomfort, or there's not trust there, then it's not going to work. Activation of a rod within your pranic tube is quite simple, actually. To activate a rod for the purpose of entering higher rounds of consciousness during sexual encounters, imagine a rod, an energy channel, between your pelvic sexual chakra, which is the second chakra, and your crown chakra at the top of your head. This will generate a flow of prana up into your own crown chakra, chakra and at that moment of orgasm you will experience not only physical pleasure but higher states of awareness as well this is just one example of how you can use the rods within your own pranic tube to activate higher centers through the power of your imagination intention and choice you can determine which rods or energy flows will be activated within your own pranic tube and for what purpose there is a third application of the term rods of power, which we would like to explain. It, too, refers to a physical rod or staff used in ancient Egypt in the times of high initiates. At the top of this type of rod was a cluster of specific crystals and gems whose frequency and structure amplified the thoughts that emanated out of the initiate's third eye. This occurred when the rod or the staff was held at arm's length directly in front of the initiate. With the crystal lined up in a direct line with the third eye, with the, with the crystals lined up in a direct line with the third eye, the initiate, using inner methods, could formulate a thought and direct it into the crystals, which could amplify that particular thought. This type of rod was very powerful and a very effective tool, and at the same time, quite dangerous. So it is not something that we wish to go into any further because this technology was used and misused and misused during the times of Atlantis. We know this. It's why Atlantis fell. We are directly mirroring what happened in Atlantis right now. The same war that's going on right now between good and evil was the same war that was happening at the fall of Atlantis. We were all there. If you were there for the fall of Atlantis, you had a karmic round trip ticket to return to earth at this time. Yeah, most of us know this. And what happened at the fall of Atlantis is that evil won and it collapsed because evil can't sustain itself. Hopefully this go round, good will win. The probability, according to all of these higher beings that we channel, is that um, probability is pretty high that the good is going to win, but it's not guaranteed. We got to do our work. That's why it's not okay to sit down and watch the movie. By sitting down and just watching a movie, you're consenting to the evil winning. Do your work. Heal yourself. Work on your vibration. Okay? So let me read this again. This type of rod was very a very powerful and very effective tool and at the same time quite dangerous. This is not something that we wish to go into any further because this te technology was used and misused during the time of Atlantis. This technology was altered when it came into Egypt. However, the fundamental understanding regarding the use of crystals to amplify thought and intention are essentially the same even 
today. There is a fourth and final understanding about the term rods of power, which we would like to address. And it has to do with what might be termed as the fourth state of awareness. But before we discuss this fourth state of awareness, let us review the first three states of awareness in case you are not familiar with them. The first state of awareness is vegetative awareness, meaning that as a human being, you do not exist as a self-concept, only your body exists. A person who suffers a massive stroke and loses all functioning within the higher brain centers will have no memory or sense of self. The body will, however, continue functioning if the vital organs were not damaged and the primitive structure of the brain are intact. This is a type of vegetative awareness. The second state of awareness is self-awareness, wherein one moves out of the vegetative state, or one might call the lower animal state, into an awareness of self or consciousness as part of the matrix or physicality yet separate from it. In higher states of consciousness, this type of awareness is sometimes called the witness. It's what we use in yoga. Parusha, the witness, the seer, the watcher. Prakriti, the body, the form, the seeable, the watchable. In this form of awareness, it is as if you are watching yourself in a movie. This type of heightened awareness, you are both aware of yourself and aware that you are watching yourself from a place of detached awareness. This form of awareness is far part of the continuum of biological functioning and yet is separate from it as well. So the self-awareness is the second state or second level of awareness, and it grows by watching your emotions, your drives, your instincts, and your thoughts. Yoga Chitta Vritti Narodaha. That's all the yoga practices is watching those thoughts. The third state of awareness deals with the external world. It involves awareness of other people, other relationships, the external world, and the forces of which you are a part. Indeed, Navigating yourself through these various forces and relationships is considered a part of normal human existence. Since society and its laws are based upon a conscious recognition of this third level of awareness and agreement upon what is required within that level of awareness, it constitutes a major life activity. This level is where most humans stop in their development. There is a fourth state of awareness, however, which is a movement in consciousness from the personal into the transpersonal realm. There are levels even beyond that, but they are so abstract as to be useless for most people. This shift into transpersonal experience is the next evolutionary stage for humanity. Our understanding of this fourth level of awareness is that it brings with it the understanding that life is living and expressing itself through you. As stated, it is a movement from a personal into the transpersonal. It is a movement from the egocentric into the universal. It is a movement in which your awareness shifts and you become very clear that life is expressing itself in multitudes forms. Life is moving through rainforest, moving through the ocean, moving through the chimpanzees, through dogs, through goldfish, through anebas, through dolphins and whales, and in the tiniest seeds that are blown in the wind. This transpersonal awareness is also in part a deep understanding that you as a human are sacred and at the same time no more important than any other form through which life is expressing its vastness. And so this fourth level of awareness is profoundly spiritual context in which your own life role continues, but your experience of yourself the world and life is vastly different. Much of the inner teachings within the ancient mystery schools dealt with this shift into the fourth level of awareness, the transpersonal. And can we see with the good? So I know what they're talking about because that shift has happened to me from time to time where all of a sudden you're like, whoa, it's a very surreal moment. You know that life is being expressed through the dogs and trees and the plants, but you all of a sudden have a moment of recognition that the same life experience that runs through your veins is also running through the bushes' veins or the dog's veins. 
And it's this very interconnected, but yet very strange experience. But can we see how the darkness inverts that with the AI? What's their transhuman agenda? They're calling it transpersonal. It's a transpersonal, transformative, where the personal is transformed. They're calling it transhuman. Do you guys see how the darkness can't create anything? It just takes this information from the light and inverts it, mimics it. The fourth level of awareness may be activated in many ways. It may be activated through altruistic services to others. It may be activated through the heart, through the emotion of love, through relationships. It may be activated through an understanding of the sacred elements, or it may be activated through the ka. There are many possible ways to activate your fourth level of awareness, but one fundamental requirement in all of them is that your pranic tube be engaged. When you begin to move into the fourth level of awareness, your pranic tube becomes activated in a very strong way, although you may or may not be aware of it depending on your degree of sensitivity. And this is sensitivity to the subtle body, which does start to happen through exercise through yoga they already talked about this in this book that you cannot achieve this this higher level of spirituality unless your body is fit enough to hold that energy through that exercise yeah in the fourth level of awareness the entire pranic tube is activated when the pranic tube begins to vibrate with pranic intensity you move out of the personal human into the transpersonal you become aware of universal life and the interdimensional worlds open up and reveal themselves. If you continue to use this very level of awareness as a reference point, you will begin to live a very different life. Yes. Chapter 13, The Unasked Question. When you explore other realms of consciousness and their potentials for higher consciousness, you will find that the question you ask determines the answers you receive. That's the thing about the I Ching. So I use the I Ching a lot. Actually, I trust the I Ching. As far as divination goes, I trust the I Ching more than anything. And the I Ching, though, when you ask it questions, you have to be very specific. And they can't be yes or no questions. You be very specific, though. And if you guys are interested in what the I Ching is, I know some people know what it is. Some people don't. It's a harder divination tool to use. It takes a lot of training to use it. Um, if that's something you guys want, we can maybe do a video on the I Ching later on. Up to you. Thus, it is crucial to ask correct questions so that you may receive the answers of greatest benefit to you. As we look at the evolutionary patterns of human beings, it seems to us that most are involved with their own personal world, their own desires, their own wishes, and the fulfillment of their own personal fantasies. Each person seems to be going on his or her own way with little regard for anything else. Therefore, the question that most individuals ask is, what will I get out of this? In nearly every situation that presents itself, most people ask the question, what's in it for me? And so that is their primary filtering. A few humans have grown beyond this attitude, of course, which is encouraging. Yet the masses are still unconscious in many ways. While what's in it for me is appropriate for certain levels of evolution, it is too restrictive for the higher levels of consciousness presently within your grasp. Interesting. It's too restrictive. What's in it for me is too restrictive. That's interesting goes back to the law of one, service to others, service to self. The unasked question is the question whose answer will bring you the greatest freedom, the greatest acceleration of growth, the greatest expansion of awareness, and the greatest mastery of your own consciousness. The answers to some of life's deepest, most profound mysteries lie within the major question. The context for this question comes from the realization that you are part of an ongoing greater life experience. Life is living itself, presently expressing itself through multitudinous forms, including you. A tree, for example, has one primary life force moving through it that's expressed itself in the form of seeds. Although each seed is important to the tree in terms of its progeny, the tree is far beyond any individual seed. 
Indeed, the consciousness of the seed cannot hold the consciousness of the tree, since the tree is vaster than the seed that hangs from one of its burrows. And yet, paradoxically, at the deepest level of matter and consciousness, the tree is also embedded in the seed as information. The number of neurons within your brain exceeds the number of stars in the known universe, and it is through their interconnectedness that you are able to think, feel, and experience the world around you. While these neurons can be viewed as one vast network, they can also be viewed as multitudes of individuals, for indeed, that is what they are. Each and every neuron holds an awareness of itself and also at the same time, links to other neurons and that linking with other neurons is what creates the phenomenon of biologically based consciousness the individual neuron within your brain does not however have an awareness of the vast complexity of which it is a part this is true with you also the multitudinous being on this planet human plant or animal that are all part of a greater life the expressions of a greater and more complex mind, if you will. You are like neurons to the earth. Consequently, the question that most humans ask, what is it for, what, what's in it for me, only perpetuates the answer that they are, by their nature, restrictive. By shifting the awareness of your own needs and desires to the unasked question, what can I do for the greater good in this situation? your consciousness evolves. So that's the unasked question. What can I do for the greater good in this situation? That shifts that context radically. By this act, you have deliberately chosen to extend yourself to the collective expression of life in its multiple forms rather than being focused and constricted only on your own individual needs. It has been said that if you wish to be loved, you must love which is an aspect of the question we are discussing. If you wish to experience being loved, then extend the energy of love to someone else and letting your love flow out to others through the law of magnet, magnets and resonance, love will respond and return back to you. But you must extend yourself beyond your own tiny world of beliefs, reactions, and desires to use this wonderful law. Extending your awareness to assist others when possible, not at your own expense, but in a balanced, integrated way allows your individual awareness to expand into a greater whole. Living your life in service to life is a different context than living your life just for yourself. Living your life for life, for the expression of life, as it moves through you and others will lead you to make choices that affirm life. If you live your life for the benefit of all life, including your own, you enter a greater sea of possibilities and a larger ocean of opportunities. Life becomes richer and more fulfilling because you begin to see the interconnectedness of all things and the vast powers of consciousness that move through the universe. Although we have come to encourage and assist you, it is appropriate that we should leave you with a challenge. We challenge you to take this opportunity that you have right before you to live your life in service to life itself. This does not mean giving away your power to anyone else. This does not mean taking care of anyone at your own expense. This means being aware of the interconnectedness of all things and honoring all things so that the motivation of your action comes not merely from self-interest, but interest in the greater good as well. If you continue to evolve and move up through the spiral of ascension, through the spiral of consciousness, your perceptive of the collective good will change. For all things are rel relative to the state of consciousness through which you perceive it. As you begin to align yourself with the evolution of life itself, with the growth of life and the consciousness, you will be lifted up in ways that you may not be able to imagine. Miracles will occur opportunities will open before you and your destiny will be changed as you live in service to life when there is an opportunity to be kind to another human or animal let your kindness show when there is an opportunity to show compassion to another be compassionate when there is an opportunity to listen to someone grant the grace and listen listen fully and deeply without wanting to impose your own views or your own agendas. 
There are miracles waiting for you when you ask the unasked question. What can I do here that will serve the greater good? What can I do here that will serve life's deepest purpose through me? Finally, we wish to say that you hold the keys to your own liberation and enlightenment. Yep, you're the storm. These keys are obtained through the power of your awareness, your ability to make choices, and through the laws of magnetic attraction and vibration. If you live your life in service to the life, to the evolution of consciousness as it expresses through you, you assure yourself of a secure footing on the stairway that leads to the heavenly and blissful realms of consciousness. To those of you who have already chosen, or who now choose to serve life and growth of consciousness as it expresses through you in all beings, we welcome you as brothers and sisters on this journey of the heart and mind. <laughs>